Welcome to our daily devotion. The Methodist Church of Barbados invites you to sing, pray, and worship with us as we declare God's glory and celebrate His mighty acts. Psalms 146. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, O my soul. While I live, I will praise the Lord. I will sing praises to my God while I have my being. Do not put your trust in princes, nor in a son of man, in whom there is no help. His spirit departs. He returns to his earth. In that very day, his plans perish. Happy is he who has God of Jacob for his help, whose hope is in the Lord his God, who made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, who keeps truth forever, who executes justice for the oppressed, who gives food to the hungry. The Lord gives freedom to the prisoners. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord raises those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the strangers. He relieves the fatherless and widow. But the ways of the wicked, he turns upside down. The Lord shall reign forever. Your God, O Zion, to all generations. Praise the Lord. Amen.
Heavenly Father, we adore you. We give glory to your holy name. You are worthy, O Lord, to be praised. You are highly exalted. We worship you for who you are, the only true God. Blessing and power and honor belong to you. Father God, we confess that we have sinned against you. We have often been disobedient to your word, but because of your great love for us, you have forgiven us. Help us, Lord, to forgive our sisters and brothers as you have forgiven us. Help us not to falter in our daily walk with you. Help us to meditate on your word as we face this new day and be drawn closer to you. Father God, as we go through these difficult days, help us to say with the psalmist, O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good and that we can take refuge in you. You are our strength. You are our refuge and you are our hope. Let your Holy Spirit take control of our lives as we seek to worship you. Let him be our source of strength and courage. Let him teach us as we meditate on your word. Fill us now, Lord. Fill us with your Holy Spirit. Father God, we thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us at Calvary. We are not worthy of that love. But you love us so much that you gave your son a ransom to save us from our sins and to give us eternal life. We thank you, Lord, for the everyday things of life, how you have provided for us, how you have helped us in difficult situations, and how you have been there for us when we did not even realize it. Thank you for your Holy Spirit who is there to guide us and help us to be obedient to your word. Thank you for our church family, where we can build up one another. Father God, at this time of the coronavirus, Lord, we do not know the source of this virus, but it has wreaked havoc on people's lives in the whole world. Father God, we know, as Second Timothy 1 verse 7 says, that you have not given us a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. So help us as your children who are obedient to your word, Lord, not to fear, but to know that you will never leave us or forsake us. We pray for all those health workers and pray that you will protect them. We pray, O oh Lord, for all those who will come to know you through this virus, so that out of bad cometh good. So now, Lord, hear our prayer and receive these devotions as we come to you meditating on your word. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, with thanksgiving, Amen.
Our reflection for today is under the theme, God is near us. And my text is taken from Romans chapter 8, reading from verse 35 to 39. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are being killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor death, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. And therefore, my friends, there's never a place we can go where God's presence won't be there. God is in our yesterday, he is in our today, and he's also in our tomorrow all at the same time. He rejoices over us. He rewards us. He blesses us. He smothers us with his forgiveness, his grace, all throughout the day and every day. In addition to the good that we face, there is also tragedy that we face. And therefore, there is no hardship we'll endure, no adversity we'll encounter where God is not with us. Holding us up with his mighty, righteous, and perfect right hand. When we feel lonely and wonder where God is, know that he's also there. He's around me and around you. He's before us and behind us. He's beneath us. He's beside us. He's beyond us. He's by us. He's inside of us. He's near us and he's over us. He's also everywhere all the time always and forever he is near us and when we experience fear and wonder why god won't remove it from us know that he hasn't given us a spirit of fear but of love of power and a sound mind and that there is nothing can separate us from his love and his presence he's always and everywhere he is near us even when we are sick and don't understand why God won't heal us, know that he's still the great physician. He's Jehovah Rapha, the God who heals. Our challenge is that the time frame we have for our healing may not match God's. But be rest assured he's doing the work in us and through us always and forever. He's near us. There is nothing that will we will ever encounter that God has not already defeated. And not just defeated, but totally destroyed. When God put Jesus' his son on the cross to cover our past, present, and future. Always and everywhere, God is near us. When we go through devastation, he is with us. When life seems to be spinning out of control he's with us when we can't seem to see the path or even our next step he's with us and i'm sure that throughout this time we've all experienced or had the option that begs us to place our trust our hope and joy in something else but god i'm sure we have tried to trust in our money I'm sure we have tried to trust in our jobs, but this time has allowed us to see that money and our jobs can disappear just like that. And the temporary joys that we would have had and the pleasures that we've had in having a job and having time to go anywhere, to shop anytime, is no comparison to the eternal 
the never-ending presence of our Almighty God who calls us his children. God's presence is the prize, my brothers and sisters in Christ. He is what we want. He is all that we want for eternity. And for us, the people who are called his children, who have accepted Jesus as our Savior and made him Lord of our lives, eternity in heaven with God is real. It is a hope-filled reality. The Apostle Paul reminds us in 2 Corinthians verse 4, chapter 4, sorry, verse 16 and 17, do not lose heart. Even though our outer nature is wasting away, our inner nature is being renewed day by day. For this light, momentary affliction is preparing us for an eternal weight of glory beyond all measure. And then brings it home at verse 18. Because we look not to what we can see, what can be seen, but at what cannot be seen. For what can be seen is temporary, but what cannot be seen is eternal. So let's adjust our sights from earth's struggles to the hope of heaven when we go there. All else will pale in comparison to what God has in store for all of us who call Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, my friends, God is ever near us. He's always in us through his Holy Spirit. So I want to give God thanks for his love and his mercy as we approach his throne of grace. Lord God, it is with a grateful heart that I come before you knowing that this is a day that you have made and we can all rejoice and be glad in it this world is yours lord you created it and you created everything in it and there is nothing that goes about in this world that you do not know of my lord so i thank you for your goodness and your mercy i thank you that in all things we are more than conquerors through you who love us. For I am convinced even more throughout this season that I've been home. That neither death nor life nor angels nor rulers nor things present nor things to come. Nor powers nor height nor death nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate me. Will be able to separate us from your love God. I want to praise you. I want to glorify you. I want to thank you for all that you have done through your son, Jesus Christ. I want to thank you for the blood that was shed on Calvary's cross for me and the entire world, Lord. So as we continue to reflect in your goodness, Lord, continue to walk with us. I continue, Lord, to invite you afresh into my heart. And I pray, O oh Lord, that you will continue to inspire me and all of us, your children, to be reminded of your great kindness, your love and mercy. I love you, Lord, and I'm nothing without you. I bless you. In the name of Jesus Christ, my Lord and soul returning King. Amen.
brothers and sisters, as you go from here into the week ahead, with whatever joys and challenges it holds, do not be discouraged or disheartened. Remember the glory that awaits you as a child of God. Hold on to that truth. Live in that hope. And may the peace of God, the blessing of Jesus Christ, and the presence of the Holy Spirit be with you and among you this day and forevermore. Amen. Thank you for being a part of our daily devotion. We trust it has been a blessing to you. Now together, let us hold fast to his word and may it dwell in all of us richly.